Hi, and welcome to MSC. In today's video, we're going to be looking at adding maximum and minimum gradients to a graph in Excel in order to determine the error in the slope. So here's the Excel sheet that we worked on in the last video. And if you haven't had a chance to watch the video about lab processing in Excel, then I fully encourage you to go and watch that one first and come back and join us here. What we did is we created a graph that had a line of best fit and had error bars that were relating to the standard deviation, which is a representation here for us, for this data set of the error in our average volume. We have five different temperature iterations and some volume data. And again, this was just factitious data, but it allowed us to plot a graph and we looked at how to do all that. We, I have still not polished the titles here. Again, that would have to be polished before it was brought into a Word file. But all the pieces are there. We have the equation of the line. We have a slope value. We have a line of best fit with error bars plotted nicely as well. So often the goal with data like this is to look at the slope. So let's take a closer look at the slope value that we have. The slope value here is 0 0.528. Right there in our line of best fit. Think about the equation of y equals mx plus b. Right, and our slope was that m value. But the slope also has units. And this unit is going to be derived from the rise over the run, a formula for the slope. So the rise has to do with our dependent variable. So dependent unit divided by the independent unit. In this case, we would have 0 0.528, the dependent units, are my vertical, and those were volume units, centimeters cubed, and the independent units were degrees Celsius. Now, it might seem weird. We spent all this time with all this error. You might have done error propagation, reading errors. You hopefully were able to follow along with plotting these standard deviation error bars. And we do all that work, and we say, yeah, the slope of this line is about 0.5. And so that might seem weird, might seem awkward that we've done all this error analysis and then we just state a slope value without a plus minus. So what I want to look at here today is plotting out lines on the graph that will help us to determine a plus minus value. So we want to get a plus minus here and we have to figure out what that plus minus value will be. So we're going to draw two different lines on this graph. The first will be drawing one that I'm going to call the maximum gradient. It's the steepest line I could draw through my data set. And that would typically be if I take from the bottom of this error bar and draw a straight line all the way to the top of this error bar. And we'll draw that on Excel. That we'll call the maximum gradient. That would be the maximum slope value that I could probably reasonably generate given my values and their error bars. The other one we'll draw is what I'll consider the minimum gradient. It will work from the top of the first error bar to the bottom of the last. And that, as you can tell here, hopefully would be a smaller slope. We'll call it the minimum gradient. So we're going to try to generate both of these in Excel and plot them right on the graph. And then we'll come back and look at how we go from that data into an error in the slope value, which is what we're trying to generate overall. Now, sometimes drawing maximum and minimum gradients in this manner does require a little bit of fine tuning. And I'll also show you what that might look like and why you might need to slightly adjust some of your numbers when you generate these lines. So back here on Excel, I want to plot these lines. So I'm going to start another little section here, and I'm going to call this max gradient. And it's going to have x 
and y values. And we're going to plot these dots right on, these lines rather, right on the graph. So the x values are my two x coordinates of my top and lowest values. So this is my negative 10 and my 30. I can enter those indirectly, or I can put equals and click on the cell. Equals A2, and this equals that one, A6. Okay, then I'm going to set my Y value, and I want to pick the bottom of that error bar and the top of this one. So at the negative 10, I want the bottom. So how do I get that point? Well, I know that the bottom of that error bar is my average value here at that point. So I'll put equals and I'll click on the first average that corresponds to the 10 degrees. And I want to subtract the standard deviation. So I'll hit minus, minus, and then I'll click on the standard deviation and then I'll hit enter. And it will do that calculation for me. And again, I'm not really worried at this stage about significant figures. When we go to import data into Word and put it in nice charts, that's where we'll have to make sure we have the right number of place values. The top piece here for the 30 degree mark, I want the top of this error bar. So I will hit equals. I will click on the value here. That's the point. And I'm going to add the standard deviation. So I'll go plus, plus this value, and I'll hit enter. So those are the data points we're going to plot here. So let's go through how to do this again. So to add data to a graph, we click on the graph, we go chart design, we go select data. This window came up that we used in the last video. We'll click add now. And just like last time, we're going to pick the X values. Well, my X values are just these two. And I'll put that in and my Y values are going to be these two, and I'll put that in. And then I'll click OK, and I'll say, yep, OK. And now we can see we have these orange dots here and here. That is the bottom of that error bar and the top of that error bar. So I can take this to the next level now. I can click on the data point themselves under Add Chart Element over to, sorry, under Chart Design, pardon me, Add Chart Element, just like last time with the trend line. So we want to go to trend line and we want more trend line options. And it seems like it's done that thing where it won't let me click on it. Click away. If that happens, click away. And I find if I re-click on everything, it'll let me do it. Let's find out. Trend line, more trend line options. So again, we do want the linear. We don't need to forecast, that's for extrapolation. We're not gonna set an intercept, but we are gonna click display equation on chart. We should not click on the R squared value. That's a measure of how good the fit is, but with two points, the fit will be perfect. So that's just gonna clutter up our graph and not provide any meaningful information. So we are not gonna click on the R squared value for this line. And we're gonna close out and there it is. That's my maximum gradient. Notice that Excel thought that I wanted that right on top of my data, which I certainly do not. And so we can, again, adjust things slightly to make sure everything fits the way I'd like it to. It is probably good practice here to indicate that this is the max gradient. Again, you might want to use actual writing it out as maximum gradient in a formal lab. And you might even want to color code this to match the color of the lines. That's always a good option as well. So you can play around with all that formatting at a later time. Right now, we're going to be focused on trying to calculate now the minimum gradient. And for the minimum gradient, we're going to repeat this process. X and Y coordinates, and the X values are still the same. I'm looking to look at the negative 10 and the 30. So this is equal to that. This one is now equal to 30. Now for the Y, I want to take this first point and I want to add the error to it. So we'll say equals this value plus the standard deviation, enter. So notice it's a bigger value, that's good. The second one equals this value, which is this value here, and I want to subtract. I'll subtract, pardon me, subtract 
this value. There we are. Okay, and now we're going to repeat what we did last time to add that other data set. So we will click on the graph. It's under chart design, select data. We're going to add another series. Again, X values are those two, same as before. Excellent, put those in. Y values here, put those in. Excellent, okay, okay. And now I have gray dots at the top there and at the bottom here, which is great. I can click on those values, go under add chart element, trend line, more trend line options, linear, yes please, display equation, yep. There it is, and here's my equation, and I will name it minimum gradient. There it is. Okay, so this is how we can do a first estimate of maximum and minimum gradients. And as we can see, we plotted exactly what we wanted to do. And when we look at this, we can say, yeah, that's a pretty good representation of the data. It could be as shallow as uh, the gray line, or it could be as steep as that orange line. The trick here is with some fine tuning, we can understand that ideally, all of our best fit lines should pass within the error bars that we have. Now, sometimes your data is linear, but there's numbers that are shifted in such a way that even your line of best fit doesn't pass through all the error bars. And that's okay. You should definitely comment on that in the caption and maybe talk about that in the conclusion as well. That was not the case for us here. Our line of best fit passed through all the error bars beautifully. Wonderful. If we look at our gray uh, line, which is the minimum gradient, it also passes through all the error bars, which is fantastic. Our maximum data, though, doesn't. It looks like it maybe passes through that one, although that might be very close. It definitely misses this one. So what we can do here is we can decide that this was a great starting point, but I actually want this point to be shifted down lower so that this fits in that, in that error bar. So what we can do here, we can say, well, what produced that point? Well, the thing that produced that point was this. So what I can do now, instead of 29.66, let's try 28, see what happens. I've shifted it down. And now it's very close to catching that error bar. I think we should go a little bit lower. Let's do 27.5. Looks like it's very, very close. Maybe a little bit lower. 27.3. And you can certainly zoom in on that part of the graph and see if it catches that error bar. And I think it does. That's wonderful. And depending on how careful you want to be with your data and how precise you're able to be, you might want to play with that in a little bit more detail. But that is what we will do in order to shift that down. And now our max gradient cuts through all the error bars. So it's a really good representation of the maximum slope I could possibly produce with my data. All starting from that top of that error bar. So now we have a graph. Again, I have to clean up my axes and maybe color code some pieces and finish my title. But now I have another graph I could pull into my lab and fully discuss all the error that's going on in this lab. As you can tell, we've added quite a bit to that original graph that we had. So sometimes you might even want to have two graphs. The first one that we produced at the start of this video that was already done from the previous video and talk about it and then pull this graph in and then talk about it depending on how cluttered your graph is, how much space you have to make this nice and large to be able to talk about all the parts. I'll leave that to your discretion in your own lab right up. So here we have the graph that we created in Excel with the maximum and minimum gradients. And that's wonderful. But now we have to figure out, okay, well, why did we do this? We did this to get an appreciation for the error in the slope. So if you remember, the slope is this 0.528 and we had discussed that the units were going to be the rise value, the centimeters cubed, over the run, degrees centigrade. So what we now need to look at is how do we take these maximum and minimum gradients and turn that into an error in the slope. 
error in the slope, and I'll use the delta there as a symbol for the error, the error in the slope is going to be equal to the max gradient minus the min gradient divided by 2. And really what this is looking at is how big could it possibly be, how small could it be possibly be, the range between the two, the difference, right? And then we're looking at half that because that'll be our plus minus value. So the max here is 0 0.6407. Again, I'm not concerned about significant figures at this stage. I'm going to use exactly what Excel gave me here for my max. I'm going to then subtract the minimum value, the slope here, which is 0 0.4. 193 and we want to take that and divide by 2. And when we do that, we get a value of 0 0.1107. This also has units, and again the units are the rise values, the centimeters cubed over the degrees Celsius. Excellent. So, that is our error in the slope. Now, I typically say for high school labs that all our uncertainties should be rounded to one significant figure. You might want to check with your teacher on how they'd like you to deal with the rounding of these values. However, I feel like I would write this as a plus minus value of 0.1 centimeters cubed per degree Celsius. And so therefore, we can say that our slope and therefore our relationship between this volume and temperature is equal to 0 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters cubed per degree Celsius. Again, I've rounded the 0.5 to 8 to one significant figure because that place value of the 5 matches the place value of my uncertainty. Again, you might want to check with your teacher in terms of what they expect you to do in terms of rounding and significant figures. This is my approach, especially at the high school level. So that is how we go about calculating the error in the slope by using maximum and minimum gradients using Excel as our tool. I hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for watching.